let's not go over the whole history here, but do you think in order to give the public confidence in the RBA that it is a good idea to have a new governor? Is that the opposition's position here? Well, I think the most important thing in an RBA governor, governor is independence from the government. Mm -hmm. uh, and look, certainly Philip Lowe has demonstrated his independence from the government, both when the coalition were in government and when Labor were in government too. Equally, it's important that the government responds to the direction of fiscal policy, of mon with its fiscal policy, mm. to monetary policy direction. We do need to make sure that both the RBA and the government are moving in the same direction rather than one foot on the brake, one foot on the accelerator. Yeah. At the same time, we want to ensure that the Governor of the Reserve Bank, whoever it is, hmm. makes their decisions entirely independent of those being made by government or direction from government, more yeah, importantly. Yeah, that's right. You want them moving in the right direction. Inflation is still a problem. There's been a lot of talk about the, the government's budget surplus. So what's your position? Should the government be spending that surplus or would that be inflationary? You know, I'm going to surprise you here, Laura. I am going to tip my hat and say, from what I've seen from Jim Chalmers' speech today or last night, he's moving in the right direction. I think he's actually listening to the messages from the coalition that the most important thing he can do to bring down inflation is to rein in those spending ambitions. Now, that's not going to make him a particularly popular treasurer with his colleagues who have a wish list of things that they would like to spend taxpayers' money on, that they've accumulated over nine years in opposition. It takes an awful lot of discipline from a treasurer and indeed from a finance minister to say no to those spending ambitions, those innate natural spending ambitions, which, uh, you know, uh, are sort of a hallmark of Labor government's past, and mm. say no, because the only way that you can bring down the cost of living is to bring down inflation. The only way to bring down inflation is to rein in aggregate demand, and that includes government expenditure. Already, this government has spent an additional $187 billion more than the coalition would have had it got into government yeah. just a year ago. And, and, and I don't think that there's an Australian out there that feels like that they're better off for it. Are you still worried about wages growth though, and the inflationary pressure that that may or might, may, may or may not have. Also, no, you know, Jeff Kennett this morning suggesting that people who are still working from home should have their wages cut. Is that a good idea? Well, there's, uh, you know, there's two issues there, and one of them was raised by Philip Lowe himself. He said that wage rises are fine so long as their productivity increases to match those wage rises. Without productivity increases, those wage rises will be inflationary. And, mm. you know, Jeff Kennett is pointing out that productive, pro productive work happens largely in the workplace, not necessarily from home. And it's certainly a right of employers to require that their employees turn up to work because that's yeah. where you get that collaborative, um, you know, that teamwork and productive how you, work. How do you change that culture that we got out of COVID? People still working from home. They need to get back to the CBDs, don't they? Yeah. They do. And of course, you know, let's face it, we, when the coalition were in government, we actually did issue a directive to the federal public service to mm. say, time to get back in the office, COVID is over. That yeah. hasn't happened at, with state public service positions. And I think that's specifically what Jeff Kennett's talking about, particularly uh, in reference to Melbourne, where the CBD is still mm. struggling to come back if to life. If they got a wages COVID. Oh, so we want to see people the, back If they've got the a office. cut in their wages, Jane, it might encourage them back into the CBD, do you think? Well, I think one of the things that Jeff was po was pointing out is that those people that work from home actually save money from not spending money on public transport or parking or petrol or whatever it is to get into work. And in fact, there are plenty of jobs out there where you have to turn up, uh, you know, and, and those people spend more to get to work. Perhaps there should be a compensation uh, or some sort of trade-off mm. for those that actually attend the office or attend their workplace rather than work from home. Now, is this a good idea? It's not something that's on the coalition's agenda, certainly not right now, but, um, mm. but that said, I think he's making the point that the most productive work 
happens in the office when you've got that collaboration, when you've got that interaction with colleagues. And, and employers have the right to expect that. Indeed, I think employers are going to find themselves with far more bargaining power um, at their disposal when unemployment rises. And we know that the budget says unemployment is going to rise. By about 140,000 uh, people are going to find themselves out of work in this 12 months alone if the budget forecasts are correct. Uh, just quickly, the Fadden by-election uh, this week, Ken, usually when you lose an incumbent member, you can lose some of the votes. But is that still true with a, a retiring candidate like Stuart Roberts? Well, uh, look, I, I won't um, comment on what's going on in a Queensland by-election in the same way that I would hope that Queenslanders don't necessarily comment on what goes on in Victorian by-elections. Suffice to say that we know Stu Robert was, in fact, a very popular local member. That we imagine we will shift the dial, but Cameron Corbell seems to be a, a very popular um, you know, local councillor. He's well known. So, you know, it will be what it will be. Um, but we would expect to retain the seat of Fadden after the by-election. With the swing to you or against you, though? Well, that's a good question. And I, as, as I said, I don't want to make electoral predictions on what goes on in a different state. Are you a bit nervous uh, after to say that, that, that I know that there's a lot of people result? on the ground? <laughs> oh, no, look, again, apples and oranges. What happens in Victoria is very different from what happens in Queensland. Mm. The incumbents were different. Uh, the candidates were different. There's always different... And, and actually, the circumstances were different too. You know, back in April, the cost of living crisis wasn't biting anything like as hard as it is now. But I was up in Queensland just uh, last week and, wow, it really is beginning to bite up there. Uh, there was a, uh, a food delivery service or a food provision service, a free supermarket called Serve Our serving our people and uh, it's seen that the demand yeah. for its services goes through the roof. This is on the Gold Coast, a normally affluent area. People living in their cars because they're homeless. Uh, I was with Angie Bell. We passed in a, quite an affluent area a little tent city in a park from homeless people. So, yes, cost of living is beginning to bite. That will certainly play into the okay. Fadden by-election. There's no doubt. All right, we'll see those results as they roll in here on Sky News on Saturday night. Jane, good to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Laura.